statement then we'll open up the questions if you have a question raise your hand and i'll call on you uh so coach go ahead and get started uh thanks everybody for coming um i guess this is the annual kickoff for uh, media day which sets us up for uh, a really good weekend this weekend with hoosier hysteria for our fans and uh, our players uh, their families, our staff, uh, and generally just kickoff week, so to speak. So it's exciting. We begin on Monday with uh, less fair fa fanfare uh, on Monday the 1st, which will be our first official day of practice. So it's, uh, it's a good time to come in midweek, uh, set it up for this weekend, and then obviously get ready to go uh, for next week. It's me. <laughs> Cell phone roll. Is it Toby Keith? Yeah, <laughs> a long time. Huh? Yeah, but Dave. Hey, coach. I want to ask you about the freshman class. What have you seen from them so far on the off season, and what are you expecting from this this uh, group of players? Well, the five freshmen have done a nice job fitting in. Um, I think they had a busy summer. Uh, six strong weeks here, uh, getting acclimated at school, getting acclimated with the team, and workouts, etc. Also, getting themselves situated physically. I think the one thing that stands out about the five. Uh, freshmen, um, genetically, physically, they're gifted. You know, their size, um, their strength, their athleticism. It's a group that can come in and compete in college physically, which is always a good thing. Not that they don't have room to grow or they don't have um, a lot of ground to cover in certain areas, but I think just as a talented group athletically, um, they bring an influx of talent. Um, each of them has an opportunity to really impact our team. Each of them has an opportunity uh, to define their own niche, so to speak, their own role here early. Um, you know, how much of that is is up to them, but uh, clearly I think all of them are confident guys and who are our fall in particular, getting to watch them in five-on-five -five settings and, and practice settings and you know drill works and things that they've never been involved with before. You get to see the level of detail and understanding of the game that they have. So you know that that's been good to see to sort of see where guys have to sort of speed up in certain areas and where some guys are ahead and where you can see them fitting in. You know maybe earlier in the year than others, but they're very pleased with them. All of them are great guys. And uh, like I said before, you know they've added value in a lot of ways. But one, I just think from a talent perspective, they make us bigger and stronger and deeper. First, uh, Mike and Zach. Just looking at the roster, it seems like you have 12, 13, 14 guys who want to play, have a niche, you know, whatever. How should you put it on them to kind of, you know, make it clear who gets the minutes, who, who gets, you know, any sort of rotation? It has to be that way. I mean, when you don't have it that way, you're sort of strapped as a coach and you kind of live and die with uh, the results. And when you have depth and you have competition level um, that I think we can have, you know, every day you're going to have to earn it. And that's how teams really grow. You know, we talked a lot about... Uh, how this team has to progress and part of it is you know if you are maximizing your effort level your concentration level you're giving everything you have you're pushing yourself to a new limit individually then obviously you're going to push somebody next to you to do the same because if not then that the guy is going to stand out in a negative fashion but if you can ever get a group of like you said 10 12 13 guys always doing that trying to push themselves to be the best which you know, results in others around them having to respond in that type of, uh, you know, manner. Your environment becomes one of which is very competitive. When you have that every day, you get better. When you have that, you, you generate a mutual respect for one another. And, you know, how that you earn minutes, obviously, is through, you know, production. And if you can get it done every day in practice, typically the way we do things, I think it translates to the floor. When you translates to the floor, when you have your opportunities, you know, you continue to grow your role. But without question, competition is going to be something that we hold, you know, dear to our heart this season not that we don't do it every season but this is a season in particular where there's a lot of guys with expectations Zach and Anthony Juwan talked at this time last year about being a leader being more vocal all those sorts of things and he kind of lived a lot of that last season as a junior how have you seen him grow from that experience and what are your expectations for him this year well Juwan's really uh, he's you know he's a senior now uh, he went through a career best year uh, last year on the floor, and I think he gained a ton of confidence. I think he's carried that confidence into the offseason and his actions and his leadership ability. I think everyone on the team kind of understands, um, you know, where he's at right now at this stage of his career compared to even 12 months ago. Uh, my expectation for Juwan, really, uh, to be honest with you, is to be about the team. 
you know, and be about his senior season, be about his two-year legacy with transition, and, and find an opportunity, find a way for him to be the driving force behind a team that, you know, reaches its maximum potential, has an opportunity to compete for the top of the Big Ten, has an opportunity to compete for an NCAA tournament bid. But none of that's possible unless he does it every single day the right way, like he did a year ago, where he really didn't have any concerns about the outside world. If he can do that again as a senior, I think that he'll show some of the added dimensions that he's added without stress, and I also think that he'll be able to carry our team in, in big games here early in the season because I do think he has a confidence level. Anthony, Archie, I, think, I know a lot of was new for you last year, first year here, but now that you have a year under your belt, how much are you personally and just with this team looking forward to this upcoming season? Yeah, much, much different. You know, I mean, you go from month to month, you know, really trial and error with you and your staff and your players. Um, you never know, you know, even when you get into December, January, February, everything is all new. And uh, once you get through the end of your first year, you take inventory, you look back on what needs to be done, and you go right to work on it, which we did. But I think as we start college basketball season, tip off this season, there's just such a different familiarity with everyone. Uh, there's such a different comfort level with everyone. And that's with me all the way down, you know, just understanding who you deal with every day and, and who you talk to every day, how your family's doing every day. It's a, it's a huge adjustment, but whether you want to admit it or not. And once you get through it, you get through it. And as you start to approach, um, you know, the second coming or second season together, you're obviously much more relaxed in things that you never really would have worried about a year ago. So we're, we're in a much different place. I do like our returning guys. I think that's the most comforting thing is our returning guys really understand sort of how we do things, what we're doing, uh, the steps that, that need to be taken. And our younger guys have people that they can watch where, you know, you're not having to teach not only your coaches, but every player. You know, right now it's more or less along the lines of trying to really do things we've done in the past the best we've ever done them and then having everybody row in the same same direction where we can get sped up with our younger players sort of viewing by example at times which no one had a chance to do a year ago. And Coach, kind of following up on that, uh, had some defensive issues early in the non-conference, but you guys ended up fourth in the league in defensive efficiency by the end of the year. So how much better is it going into year two defensively having laid that foundation? Well, you never really, one thing you do learn is you never really hold, hold your hat to things that have done in the past. That team a year ago started at ground zero. I think everybody knew that. And I think we finished playing a very, in a very competitive, spirited way. I think we, we learned how to battle together. We did things, um, you know, together all season long. And that team finished the season yesterday with, or last year with a much, much more understanding of how we have to do things. Now the key is for those eight returning guys to not regress back to where the beginning was again. It's to start at a much higher level. The expectation is much different and they should be ahead of our younger players. Our younger players, our freshmen in particular, should not be in the same boat where a year ago everyone kind of looked the same at times until we started to guys started to climb the ladder so um, you know that that's all part of it that's all part of building the program is having consistency and some continuity a lot of our older players now are going to be held accountable at a much higher standard early in the year that should put pressure on our younger guys to uh, be better but definitely without question there was a lot of improvement a year ago which is something to to really uh, you know keep in your back pocket so to speak that you know you can always you can always get better Jeff. With, uh, with Justin Smith, we saw the athleticism and stuff last year. But well, what, what do you guys focus on with him to help him make jumps? What are maybe steps one, two, three for him? Um, I think the biggest thing for Justin in my mind is to obviously use that great talent, athleticism, and get points on the board. So many times, I think a year ago, you saw the explosive jump, but you didn't see the two points they get on the board, or you didn't get the end one, you had to go to the foul line and maybe make one, which to me was a very young, um, uh, you know, a guy who was very young and talented, but at the same time, adding the value of style over production. And I think that's something we've really hammered home with him in terms of his concentration level, because he could probably put four to five more points on the board for us this season with the amount of repetitions he's going to get, the amount of minutes that he'll get, where you know Justin has a chance to really be one of the best finishers in our league. He has a chance to put more points on the board for us. And for him in general, I think that's a difference between averaging six or seven and maybe 11 or 12, 13 on a deep team. We've also really focused in on his skill level, you know, becoming more perimeter oriented, spending a lot of time on his shot, like we always do, uh, becoming a better just perimeter oriented player. But just in knowing him, he's a great kid, he's really, really intelligent. 
he did show signs last year where he really belonged, and I think now it's more consistent consistency. It's more of an approach of production, especially, like I said, finishing, but also maybe finding a way this year where he's a lot more skilled on the perimeter, especially if he's open, you know, shooting the ball. Great. Archie, what have you seen from Romeo's development? I know we all saw what he looked like six months ago. What does it look like now? Well, he's 15 pounds heavier, uh, which with a guy like him is a huge deal. You know, the bumps that he takes, the amount of drives that he has at the basket, his ability to obviously leap and get in the air and take contact. You know, he's roughly 6'6", 215 right now as a freshman, so that's not a little guy. So I think, you know, just being stronger um, is just something that you're going to see. From a game perspective, I've really enjoyed uh, being around him. You know, he's a guy that um, I think is so used to really being perfect in many ways, or at least trying to approach being perfect in many ways, that, you know, making mistakes and some things like that here as he's been away from us and out of his comfort zone, it bothered him. Whether he missed a couple shots in a row in a drill or whether he's been in practice and he struggled defensively early, you could see almost a pressure or almost a, wow, this, this isn't as easy as I maybe once thought, to a guy that's, you know, has, has learned week by week that it's okay to mis make a mistake. It's okay and understand that you're not going to be perfect to make every shot, but the rapidness that he can grow will only really stay within his framework of concentrating on just getting better and being one of the guys. And we've really tried to approach that with all of our players, coached in the same way as we've coached every guy here so far in the first however many months we've been here. And from week one to sort of feeling it out to week two, maybe feeling a little better, week three, taking a jump, and then all of a sudden week four and five in our preseason, I think he's been at his best. So, you know, to say the least, he's gotten better. He's, he's, he's embraced this uh, system. He's embraced what we've tried to get through to him. But uh, he's got a long road ahead like the rest of them. And, uh, you know, we look forward to coaching him, to be honest with you. He's, I think, really, really in a good place in terms of being here, getting coached, being with his teammates, getting pushed. He's having a good time, obviously. Uh, it's a great place to go to school, so we feel good about where he's at. Terry? Archie, how big of an off-season acquisition was Evan Pitzner? And in, in terms of maybe fulfilling that three-point need that you guys are maybe missing? Evan is a fantastic uh, kid. He's a fantastic player and couldn't be more excited he decided to join us. And I would say, you know, of all of our additions, he may be the most important just due to the age that he comes in, the experience level on college basketball's big scene by winning as many games as he's won. And he brings an offensive skill set that uh, maybe, like you said, is was lacking a little bit from the ability to maybe have a fourth shooter on the floor, a fifth shooter on the floor. I definitely think he's a bona fide game three-point shooter. His percentages stay that way. And then watching him work out, uh, he's very serious about his game. He just brings another mature winning approach. And I think, you know, he'll be a home run in terms of to our fan base and to his teammates and everyone. He's just a really, really likable guy that uh, we're excited to have. True. Uh, last year, Devontae Green was a guy that showed flashes of uh, what he can do. Uh, what, what's the biggest difference with his mindset and his game after the offseason in the fall? Well, I think, you know, Devontae, like a lot of guys, when they go through their first year with change, it goes and ebbs and flows when things are going well for you and then they aren't. And I think sometimes when that happens through the course of the year with change, you question things. You question coaching. You question, uh, you know, am I at the right place? You question the style of play. You start to question everything that goes into it, and you're not as easy to just dive in and embrace. I think the one thing that he came to grips with at the end of the season was, I'm going to dive in and embrace, and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do here. And I should see how it works. And with a six- to eight-week period of time from the end of the season, he did a great job not only on the floor, but he did a great job in the weight room. He did a great job in the locker room. So he had a great six- to eight-week period of time there. His numbers in terms of the spring really, really stood out as a guy that really embraced the challenge, and he got better. I think as we got into the summer, he put another really good 10 weeks together where um, he was just as consistent as he was the, the last 16. If you ranked our players, you know, top to bottom in consistency, it would be very hard for me to tell you that Devontae didn't have as consistent as an offseason as any guy. And uh, how that translates as we start practice and games start looming and minutes start to be handed out, you know, that's where as a junior you'd hope he'd be the guy that could really see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. He's got a great opportunity to have a great role on this team, and he's just got to embrace what we're asking him to do. And 
when he played well last year, our team was a lot different. We had some really, really good wins, and we had some really, really good performances when he played well. When he didn't play well, or we didn't have that other guard on the floor at times, you know, that's when I thought we really struggled. And, you know, we came down to so many games in the last four minutes, and that's usually when it comes down to winning time. And I always say if you got great guards the last four minutes of the game, you know, you, you trust those guys to make the plays. And we just didn't have that a year ago in terms of being able to – make crucial stops or at the end of the day not have a crucial turnover or make the correct read with two minutes on the clock. You know, sometimes it goes unnoticed, but you know, you could go two, three wins, take two, three losses off the off the schedule if you just did a little better job, you know, finishing games. And I think Demonte could be a big reason why if he's locked in and consistent that, you know, hopefully maybe we're pulling those games out a little bit this year. Okay, Seth and Mike. Uh, Coach, what do you think a guy like piggybacking off that a little bit? What do you think a guy like Rob could learn from playing with Devontae? Well, I think, you know, Rob's got to learn the ropes just like every other guy does. But I think Rob's game is Rob's game and Devontae's game is his his game. They're, they're, they're different players. But if you ask me what you can learn, I think one of the things that Rob can really take from Devontae is the pick and roll game. I think when Devontae's playing at his best, he's the one guy on our team that can really deliver sort of an assist type pass, get an easy bucket. Um, you know, whether that's a pick and roll bounce pass or whether that's just making the proper read. I think Devontae's really got a pretty good feel when he's uh, playing the right way on how to attack, you know, off those ball screens and some stuff, but making people better. But Rob, Rob's going to be a guy I really think that's going to grow. I think Rob's biggest asset here early, as I've seen him, is right where we expect that He's got a high IQ. He's really intelligent. He's competitive. Um, he's 185 pounds as a freshman, which gives him an added advantage and strength defensively. I think off the ball defensively and watching him here early, he's got a chance to help our team. So I think Rob's just got to work, work to keep his feet on the ground, do it every single day, and he'll create his own niche. But definitely as you watch older players, as you watch other guys on the team, you know, having the ability to kind of take, take a couple parts from Devontae, I would say, you know, really being creative with the ability to get the assist. Coach, uh, can you update us on Ron Davis, where he is, um, has he been able to keep his weight down and helping him put the weight on the foot, and, and how far is he from full contact and so forth? Well, really, um, Duran is taking it slow. He was here all spring and summer um, doing his rehabilitation. Um, he wasn't really cleared to start running until maybe, you know, June, I would say. So he's a little, he was slow um, in terms of his recovery. As we've gotten here into the fall, we've really started to increase him. He's participated in not only our five-on-five non-contact, but he's also participated in some two-on-two, three-on-three half-court contact. So he's starting to elevate to where he can get a chance to see him play a little bit. And I don't think that he's that far off. Um, his biggest battle will be conditioning and his, and his getting his weight back down because he just hasn't had the ability to consistently condition every single day. Um, but he's slowly but surely he's coming around. I think the one thing we'll be interested to see as we start practice on Monday is, you know, as he gets elevated in his activity, how does he feel on a back-to-back -back or does he have to take a day off in between a three-day period of time when we practice just because of the stiffness, the soreness. Uh, but he's going to have to deal with that. And a lot of times when guys come off these injuries, you really don't get a chance to see them maybe recover and feel good about themselves in almost a year. So you're looking at January 1 when he did it. And, you know, to me, he's on schedule, but in terms of looking like a Duran that played in November and December a year ago, he's not there yet. But uh, we're hopeful that every week he'll get a little bit better and he'll keep progressing without resistance because, you know, clearly he's a bigger, stronger, older guy that you know, has shown glimpses, uh, you know, that he can – you can throw him the ball and he can get a basket for you every once in a while. So we got to, uh, you know, just hope and cross our fingers and keep him on the, uh, keep him on the, uh, on the everyday approach. And I think I think he'll get there eventually. Jim and Zach, coach, you often talk about conditioning, and obviously, Coach Cook Marshall's had a tremendous impact on this team. How do you expect to see that translate onto the floor this year? Well, the biggest thing is preventative. You know, you know, I don't think that. You know, obviously, as we train, we try to do things in a manner where as we start the season, you know, guys are feeling pretty good and you're not dealing with a ton of knickknack stuff. And, you know, knock on wood, I think that's been our offseason. We've had a lot of good stuff happen in terms of development, physically stronger, weight gains, uh, weight losses, whatever it may be, our team physically is looking good, but they're feeling pretty good coming into the year when we're not dealing with a ton of just maintenance issues. That's always important as we start. 
And you know, really, the month of October is a huge test to the body. You know, you start to go back to back, you start to get physical, and then that's where you, you hope that you can use your practices to really start to energize your conditioning level towards, you know, not even games, but just scrimmages and things like that. The scrimmages get you to the games, and maybe your first couple exhibitions obviously are leading you into that opener. So our approach is slow in, and the hope is to always be at your best, you know, at the right time of year. And, and for us, you know, that's January, February, March, and that's when you got to have that, that – that ability to really push through and finish strong. So the Cliffs really, really been monumental for us. I think our players gravitate to his style, and uh, you know, from a strength and conditioning element, I don't think that uh, I don't think that we're uh, we're really lacking there in terms of the uh, the development side of things. I think you know, just taking a look at guys being here for 16 months with them or a year, being here year to year. I mean, you know, our sophomore class in general has really changed physically, which should really help their games. Uh, if you look at Juwan, just being where he was when we first got her to where he is now, by far and away the most explosive that he's been since he's been in college. And I think you can go down the line and sort of see the gains. But we're, we're, we're pleased with the development this season coming into the, into the year. Zach and Alex. Talking about, excuse me, talking about Rowan, I imagine you were kind of keeping an open mind about him, but you'd also evaluated him when he was in high school. Are there ways he surprised you as you've kind of worked with him here since he got on campus in the summer? Uh, just how talented and gifted he is athletically. I mean, I think, I think you, you can probably say he's very athletic or watch him play and say, you know, wow, but he just does things uh, – it's so easy and so smoothly. You know, if he was a football player, he'd be Randy Moss. If he was a track athlete, you know, he'd probably be Usain Bolt or one of those guys. It's just like the stride, the elevation, the quick jumps, second jumps. You know, the uh, you know just the knifing through people, covering ground. You know, from rim to rim, things just like that. That just he probably takes for granted. But in most cases, you watch him, and he really makes it look easy. Um, I think that he's a better scorer than he is shooter. I think he's a better in the game five on five lights are on than he is five on zero, you know, and around. He just seems to be a guy that has the ability to play with others around him, against him, um, rather than just kind of going in the gym. He's just going to look like a million bucks in an individual workout. I think he's more of a player than he is a skill demonstrator. So he's got a lot of feel to him as well. Um, you know, the thing about him, I think the other thing that's been very unique is he can pass the ball. You know, he can make guys better. He's not afraid to make guys better. And uh, that'll be a big attribute to him with the amount of tension that maybe at times he'll see in terms of being able to drive and in the traffic and whatnot. Drum Hunter, what, what are your impressions of him since he's been on campus and how will his versatility maybe help him uh, get into the rotation this year? Uh, Jerome loves the game of basketball. More than any guy that I've probably been around a long time, uh, he can't get enough of the gym, which is a great sign as a young player. It's a great sign and attribute to deal with, you know, me or our staff. you got to love the game. I think Jerome loves basketball. Um, you know, he's 6'7", he's 200, probably 10, 12 pounds right now as a freshman. He's got to get bigger and stronger. He's going to develop from that combo forward to more of a wing perimeter oriented guy, which, you know, that's a tough change, you know, in terms of ball handling and guarding smaller players. So he's going to go through a bunch of that. But he has as much upside and talent as any guy that we've got. And I think within time here, he can develop into a terrific Big Ten player, all-conference type player in his time. He's a much better three-point shooter than I ever imagined he would be coming in. Uh, so I think he's got some good things going for him. But just in terms of understanding the game, as seeing it as a guard more though, more so than seeing it as maybe just a, you know, a, a kind of a guard and kind of a big, you know, one of those combo guys that's really we're going to try and move because, you know, the key to size of your team just in general, you know, especially at the wing spots, you know, when you're six seven, you know, that's a lot different than being six foot two, which we were at times last year. The amount of size and athleticism that you all have on the wing and in forward spots, do you feel like switching to something might be able to do more on defense this year? Yeah, it's actually one of the things we talked about a lot um, in the offseason is being able to play a smaller lineups and being able to do more complementary switching, so to speak, on the ball, not as much off, but definitely on the ball where we're not in rotation as much, uh, just dealing with the certain styles of play that we see throughout the course of the season, especially in the Big Ten. There's times when you know, you're playing against four guards or five guards, whether that's Nebraska or Penn State at times at the four um, with, with Stevenson. And um, you know, there's different guys and different teams that you play against, but I do think that you know, our traditional way of doing things, which I don't think is wrong, right or wrong. I think when you're aggressive and you can be the team that you want to be and get away with it, that's always the best. But if you got to throw maybe a curveball in there every once in a while, it's to, it's to provide a different 
um, way of doing it. And I think switching with our like sizes is something that's uh, it's been talked about a lot. Um, Coach, you have touched a lot on Romeo and, and his athletic ability and, and all of that type of stuff with his talent, but how have you seen him kind of affect the team and the team chemistry and just the camaraderie of, of the group so far? How do you see him affecting that throughout the season? Well, I think he's um, he's getting used to the team and the team's getting used to him just like all freshmen have to do. They have to find their groups, their cliques. You know, everybody kind of figures their way, their way out. But I think the one thing about Romeo that's very unique is um, – you know, he's a quiet guy, but once he starts to feel some things out, especially with his peers, you know, he's a fun guy. He's a good guy to be around, and I think that's what's it's been good um, with our team. You know, he hasn't come in here and trying to, uh, so to speak, run the show or, or stand out in any different way. I think one thing that's good about him is he's just going about his business, doing what uh, we're asking him to do. At the same time, when he's gotten more comfortable and as he's gotten a little bit more time, to be on campus with the guys, you can kind of tell that he's just, he's a regular guy that likes to be in a locker room. Coach, Ray Thompson's obviously coming back, coming off of a red shirt year. How do you see him fitting in this year? Uh, Race, you know, took the red shirt year and he did a nice job with it. Uh, he really uh, changed his body and he got healthy. So I think you'll see, a, you know, you, you probably won't see as much, but we as a staff have seen a much more fluid athlete and a much uh, better conditioned athlete. Uh, he's a much different place than he was a year ago at this time. You know, he had just gotten here a year ago at this time. So uh, he's not afraid to mix it up. Uh, he proved that last year in practice every day. He'll get in there and rebound. He'll get in there and bang. Um, and he's got a really good IQ in terms of being able to think the game where he can pass it, uh, he can move it. He's not an unskilled player, you know, in terms of not being able to play facing or with his back to the basket. Um, he's got to shoot the ball. You know, especially from the three-point line at a certain time here in his career where that's going to be his biggest gift is being able to stretch the floor because um, he's not really above the rim, so to speak, around the basket. But um, I think he's a guy that's a great team guy. He's very popular. Did, a, did another great job last year really just fitting in and working hard. And I think if Race, you know, just stays the course here, you know, he'll have a chance to really, you know, find himself on the floor at times, you know, um, because like I said, he's physical. He's not afraid to mix it up. He's got a good IQ. And, uh, you know, as the season starts to evolve, hopefully offensively his niche can start to be more of a, you know, perimeter face-up guy than it is more of a back-to-the-basket guy. So Aaron and Stuhl have the last question after Aaron. Of course, how much of a balance is there, if at all, to understanding Romeo's a freshman and has some adjusting to do versus the need for him to score and kind of create for you guys? There'll be give and take. I mean, you know, um, there's got a there's a growing period, you know, for young players in college. You know, there's very few that can just get off to a good start and just seamlessly start, you know, making it look easy. He's going to have to work through it like everybody else. But, you know, Romeo's gift is scoring. His gift is obviously offensively he's always been a very gifted scorer in all levels, whether that's from the three, the basket, or in transition. I think he'll have the opportunity in all three of those areas to be as aggressive as he possibly can. We want him to attack. Um, and I think he's smart enough to understand that winning is a big part of what's going on right now here at Indiana you know I think he's looking at it much less of hey I'm gonna get out there and score 25 and we'll see how it goes more so than understanding that his his imprint on what's going on here really changes in the wind column if that happens and I think all of our guys are sort of understanding that there's gonna be some sacrifice this year and uh, painting that picture for them sometimes isn't easy for them to see until maybe the first game and only five of them take the floor. Uh, but there's going to be some serious sacrifices, not just from Romeo, but Juwanda to every single guy that just wants to contribute. You know, this has to be a team of depth and togetherness this year. I mean, it really does. If we're not playing, you know, nine, ten guys, then we're not getting the maximum out of everybody on the team. So with that being said, and you, know, you play nine, ten games, there's going to be a little give and take. But over the course of the season, when more people can help you impact games on a given night, you know, the more chance you have of being a team that can win, you know, more games. And uh, that's what we're going to try to strive for. Stu, last question. Coach, what kind of an impact can a high-energy guy like Jay Forster bring to the, the front court? Maybe what does he give you this year that maybe you didn't have last year? Well, Jake is a live wire. I mean, he really is. He is a live wire. Um, he is as energetic, as vocal, as high sprung as a guy that I've had come into college in a while. He provides instant energy. He provides instant talk. Uh, he can be the life of the room. And in practice, it's more so than anything. He can really be the life of practice, which I love. 
with that motor, he's also a guy that's not afraid. I mean, he's going to challenge you on both ends of the floor, whether he's trying to dunk on you or whether he tries to block your shot, um, which is a great, another great attribute to have. He's got to learn to slow down. He's going to have to learn that, you know, he's going to be guarding bigger, stronger guys for the first time. He's going to have to do less, you know, less, more technique, more learning than just, you know, energy level. But he's a guy that if he can ever really just start to maneuver around, he's almost like a, I don't want to say, a, you know, a Dennis Rodman or, or you know, somebody that, but he's going to be an energy level guy that I think the crowd will be behind him and he's a guy that's going to make energy plays with his tip dunks or offensive rebounds or block shots. You know, that's going to be his, his identity for our team, to bring that toughness level, bring that energy. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that when you bring those things to the table, you know, you jump in, you jump in the forefront pretty early because you're not afraid. But over the course of his career here and what he's trying to do, you know, with his game, he's got a great work ethic and I think he'll be a guy that really you can see really evolve and as he leaves here one day, you know, see as a much different player. But he's coming in with an energy level that we didn't have last year. All right, Coach. Thank you All right, thank you.